recognize Senator Fisher for her questions. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Welcome, General Alvin. Nice to see you, and congratulations to you and your family on this nomination. As we talked about in our meeting, um, the Sentinel emplacement is the largest and the most complex project that the department has undertaken in decades. What efforts do you think should be taken to ensure that this program remains on schedule? Well, Senator, thank you very much. I appreciate that question because we need to keep reminding ourselves that one of the most sacred missions that we have is strategic deterrence. And maintaining that reliable and effective nuclear deterrent is part and parcel to anything we do as a Department of Defense and securing the nation. As you well know, and we discussed in your office, this Sentinel program is part of the, uh, one of the most complex yet important transitions and recapitalizations of our ICBM fleet. To your question about how do we ensure it remains on track, Senator, I think one of the most important things that we can do is, is vigilance to ensure that as we see external factors that might um, potentially provide challenges or opportunities to the cost schedule and performance of that program, that we need to make sure we communicate with this body and collaborate to understand if there are opportunities that we can help to maintain it on track and have the warfighter uh, get the requirement on time. And one of those things is the recent acquisition adjustment that, of an acquisition strategy to look for those things we might be able to decouple and pull to the left. But those are the things I would say vigilance and collaboration are the way that we can ensure that that program may, remains on track. And if I'm confirmed, I will pledge to do so, both counts. I appreciate that because um, a lot of times there's outside, I call them outside pressures, uh, whether they're um, macroeconomic pressures that we're looking at. So I hope that we can continue to have a, a good discussion and an open discussion when you are uh, seeing pressures like that. Uh, the Department of the Air Force also has uh, a role in a significant number of systems that comprise our uh, NC3. And while uh, NC3 doesn't always uh, receive the, the focus, as we look at modernization, it is extremely important, as you know. Um, in order that this project also remains on schedule, it's going to be vital that it, that it does so that we can maintain our nuclear deterrent. Uh, if confirmed, will you commit to working with this committee closely on these efforts? Senator, absolutely. Thank you. Um, also, we're looking uh, at technology gaps because technology gaps are always a concern whenever we're upgrading or transitioning to new or replacement platforms. Ensuring that mission capability does not falter can sometimes prove delicate to navigate, especially when we're looking at several factors like budget constraints, like the macroeconomic um, uh, stresses that, that we face, changes that we sometimes see in the program from the initial mission. So General, how should the Air Force plan to integrate new technology systems and existing or into existing infrastructure and operations so that you can maximize the effectiveness of those? Thank you, Senator. I appreciate the question. I think there's several depths to that question because we do need to integrate new technologies into existing equipment. I think many of the headlines that we get are wanting to modernize and develop new systems. However, we still have many capable systems. We just need to integrate the technologies to make sure they remain relevant. And I think part of that is ensuring that we know exactly what we need for keeping that particular platform relevant. And as we do that, we bake in things like cyber resilience and cyber protection, because a lot of those systems weren't originally imagined and designed when the cyber threat was as great as it was. So I think making sure from the start we have cyber resiliency and cyber protection baked into those so we don't add increased risk to those particular platforms will be key. And if confirmed, that will be definitely something I will be advocating for. That was the, going to be the second part, and it is with the second part of my question to you. How do those cyber threats um, pose challenges to, to the integration that we're looking at? Can you give just a couple examples in this setting, please? 
Well, Senator, I think an example I would give is many of the legacy systems that we had weren't designed with that cyber protection. And so therefore there are vulnerabilities in the systems themselves. And we are working a twofold uh, solution to that. The first is, as I mentioned, the baked in resiliency and what we call our cyber resilience office for weapon systems. That's to make sure anything we do, the software and new platform has that baked in. But we have also looked at something through a, a project we had, Task Force Sentinel Stand. And that was really to look at where those vulnerabilities exist in the systems that were built before the cyber protections were baked in and we understood the nature of the threat. So we're evaluating, first of all, what to look at in our legacy systems. And then second, we're putting sensors on those so we can ensure that we can see, because you can't defend what you can't see. So it's important always to understand the threat. Absolutely, Senator. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Fisher. 